Hello, and today we're going to be looking at how to use the Electron Analog 4 with your modular synthesizer. Okay, so first up, the Electron Analog 4 has um, four synthesizer tracks for the internal synthesizer engine, an FX track and an all-important CV track. Uh, the Analog 4 has four CV out, CV A, B, C and D, and they are assignable to whatever kind of CV you'd like to make it, whether it be trig, pitch, or uh, LFO values and so on. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to get the Analog 4 keyboard to control um, the notes played by the Hertz donut in my modular. Uh, how we're going to do that is first we're going to hold function and press CVA. And that's going to let us choose the type of CV we're going to send out from CVA. So today we're going to be choosing pitch volt per octave. We can also do hertz per volt, which is good for Korg MS20s or Yamaha CS keyboards. But for today, we're going to stick with the volt per octave uh, system. Um, middle C is set to 3 volts and volt per octave is set to 1. We can change the tuning to get more interesting scaling and so on, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to leave it at default. Okay, hit no and you'll go into the main screen for tuning. You see we have our tune, that's our coarse tune, we have a fine tune, and we have bend and slide. This is a very simple uh, pitch envelope which we can apply uh, to our pitch CV. And slide also affects when we put the arpeggiator on, um, will affect legato and slewing of the, the pitch CV. We can also change the source from uh, not actually the CV track, but we can use the other tracks to sequence our modular. So maybe we could use the rhythm of the kick drum to trigger something else on the modular if we liked. Um, but for now, we're going to leave it on CV. Okay, so over here, this yellow cable. This is CVA from my Electron Analog 4. Um, I'm going to run that into the pitch input of the Hertz donut. And I'm going to take the sign out and run that into the input of my Optimix. Now, when I open the filter on my Optimix, we should suddenly hear a noise. And if I play a note on the keyboard, it's a change according to the keyboard. And we can use the tune. Okay, and the bend, let's show you the bend. Um, so the bend is like a rudimentary pitch envelope. Slide controls the amount of time of the bend. Pretty good for bass drum sounds. Okay, so let's turn that back off. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're then going to use CVB as a trigger to strike the input of the Optimix so that we're not just getting a constant note. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to hold function and CVB, and then we're going to choose trigger. Uh, we can also do gates, but for now we're going to do triggers. Um, trigger, we can choose the trigger length, we can even do the trigger polarity, V trig and S trig. And we can also set the voltage level of the trigger that we're sending. We're going to leave it at the default 5 volts for now. Okay, so this orange cable is my CVB from the analog 4. And this is going to go into the Optimix strike input. So now, if I play a note on the keyboard, this should strike the envelope and play a note from the Hertz donut. Cool. So the Analog 4 also has uh, an arpeggiator. Um, the arpeggiator has a bunch of different modes. True will follow whatever sort of setting we set in the arpeggiator editor, uh, which we're not going to get into now, but it's quite fun. Uh, there's also uh, up, down, cycle, shuffle, random, and poly. Poly is not going to make much difference because we're using obviously a monosynth right now. Um, so let's just put it in up for now and play a chord. We can also change the range all the way up to 8 octaves, I believe. Let's leave it on 2 for now. And we can also change the speed. Obviously, my trigger. 
the length is too too long to go super fast. Um, if we put legato on, the slide control will then control the slew of the pitch. So if we go back to RCVA and change the slide parameter, that will change the amount of slew. Which is very handy indeed. Okay, so now that we've got the the pitch set up and we're striking our envelope, we've got the notes, we can also record into the sequencer. There are a bunch of ways you can do that. If you want to, you can hit record and play and then just play some notes. So now they're recorded in. So you can play live and record that way. Uh, there's also a built-in click track, which we're not going to play right now. Or we can step them, put them in on the steps by holding one trigger and holding the note. Okay, and then we press play. Oh, so we still got the arpeggiator turned on. Obviously we can set the tempo in the uh, analog port and the sequence will follow. We can also set the length of the pattern so we can have up to 64 steps. Um, let's take this down to 8 for the moment. And then go back up to 16. You can have individual track lengths per track. Seeing uh, one at the moment, I believe on 16. Um, you can also do note slides, which, and you can also do parameter slides, but note slides are quite useful. If we go into the note slide, we can then choose a step to slide, and this will be affected by the slide setting again. really cool little thing that I didn't realize for quite a long time is if you hold function and use the arrow keys you can scroll the pattern along 